Julian, you want to take me through your telescope, what you got there? Okay. Starting from the bottom, say. Right, we have a EQ6 tripod. Yeah. Mounted on an EQ modified mount. So all the slow motion controls and everything has been taken away and the dovetail fitting put on. Vixen dovetail plate. I've fixed a dovetail to the Astra track so I can rotate it 360 if I need, need to. On top of that we've got an easy touch, William Optics easy touch. Um, on this side we have a modified 20D. We've That's a uh, camera lens, yeah? Canon, Canon, Canon camera lens. Camera. Yeah. Um, 100 to 400 Canon lens with a finder scope on a ball joint set up on one side. Let's just zoom into your finder scope. Okay. And that, that's sitting on the um, on the camera hot shoe. On the hot shoe where you'd normally put a flash. A normal flash, yeah. Okay. Uh, the plastic bag is over the uh, the setup because it will get quite damp tonight and dewy, and on, and the water will start running off of it. Um, on this side, we've got a counterweight, uh, a ball joint head, and a fine finder scope, a 50mm finder scope, which acts as a counterweight for the camera and the, and the lens. So all this is balanced. Okay. So there's no strain on the Astro track when the Astro track is tracking. Excellent. That looks like a pretty good setup, Jimmy. I hope you get some good results. Thank you. Okay, Keith, do you want to take me through your setup? Yeah, what we've got here is an SB ST7 XME CCD camera and connected to an ETX 90, 90mm. And what sort of telescope is that? It's a mech suit of Cassegrain and it's 90mm aperture. Yeah. It's a 1250mm focal length, which is actually very important for what I'm actually doing here. Um, so what is it you are doing? I'm actually doing some drift scanning images or time delay integration for do you want, sky. Do you want to just explain what that is? Yeah, what that is, is um, the, the mount itself is totally undriven. All it's there for is to point the telescope to where I want it to be pointing in the sky. And the whole idea is, is that as the star field passes across the telescope, the star images will pass across the chip, yep. the actual camera itself. And what the camera will be doing under the control of the computer is to actually take down the last column and build an Im image on the screen as everything moves across. So as a, as a star moves from one column to the next, yeah. the computer's sort of shifted everything along. So At the you, same rate as the star is moving across oh, the actual CCD. That's clever. So mm. at that rate, you don't have to worry about um, any alignment, proline alignment, you don't have to worry about driving it, you just let the sky do its job by giving you the long, expo you know, long panoramic exposures across there. So other than not driving it, is there any other advantages to using uh, uh, well the fact that you get nice long images um, well longer than the chip yeah you can have it any length you like because obviously the long length exposure is going to make the actual image wider 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 oh i see okay. so i'll probably do about 3000 pixels long and how, how how long will that take in time 3000 well, pixels each, each time for second to go across the chip it's going to take about 50 seconds so it's an effective exposure of 50 seconds so however how deep camera gets in 50 seconds is what this is actually going to be limited to. If you want to make it longer than 50 seconds you need a shorter focal length. Longer focal okay. length gives a shorter focal length. So your exposure is dictated by the size of your chip and, and the focal length. The focal length the and um, you can't change it basically, you can't do shorter or longer. It's, no, you can't. You, you, that's, and, uh, that's probably the limitation of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so we've got that and it's all connected to my laptop here which has got running Ekmax and DL which has got all the software which does all the downloading of the images. So all hopefully right. we'll get some results tonight. Excellent, brilliant. Oh, good luck. Thank you. Are you ready to go, Andy? I don't know whether I've got so. pair, another pair of tracky bottoms on. You've got your Celestron, is it a C8, is it? Celestron C8. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's a juice shield you're putting on, yeah? yeah I'm a pair of juice shield. Well, it's 8 o'clock. It's almost dark. There's some high cloud, but hopefully Is Polaris out yet? you're supposed to say no. clear for clear till about one in the morning, and we'll probably have to give up because it's supposed to cloud over. I say that it's not particularly transparent. So, start of the night. You're all set up. Are you ready to go?
Not at the moment, no. Oh, what's the problem? Um, two things, focusing, and because um, it's such a narrow field of view, it's trying to find a likely target to aim for. Okay. Um, but it's not dark enough yet to actually do anything serious yet, so I'll spend the time trying to focus to see if we Alright, well good luck, we'll come back later in the day, and uh, later in the night, and see how you're getting on. Yeah, good stuff. Got you an open heart surgery, guys, what's going on? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I just wonder if he, I hope he knows what he's doing. Oh, look out, <laughs> he's got the bloody video out again. <laughs> You can see it's in for I swear it's going to be on YouTube. <laughs> I didn't swear no, much. No, not after what I said earlier. <laughs> what did you say earlier? What the actual problem is, Simon, is the camera is actually mounted 180 degrees around the wrong way. So you're taking images backwards? Yeah. Right, it's, it's just a, instead of having pinstripe stars going across, we're having long, long, long streaks. Ah, OK. So so that won't help, will it? No. So hopefully now that we've done this, I'm glad I put this guy right round and stop the camera from um, falling off. Oh, okay. It's a professional setup then. Oh yeah, this is how the pros do it. Okay, well we do have a clear night, which is brilliant. Yeah, we'll be up and um, running again in about the next five to ten minutes. Alright, I shall come and check on you in a minute. And then once case. And that looks like Jupiter out there. Sort mine out, hopefully. It'll be cloudy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that I'll there. This filter wheel cable. It's caught up in there. It's Jupiter. Will be not real focused. Right above Martin's head. Uh, so Andy, what are you looking at? I'm looking at M57, the Ring Nebula. What's it look like? Isn't it good? Yeah. Do you want to get good. a nosy focus for using your partner? Yeah. And that's looking through it, through your. Through a very expensive eyepiece here. A Kelner. A Kelner eye is it? <laughs> Kelner eye and eyepiece. Uh, Bought for ten pounds. Well, if it works, it works. who cares? That's right. Oh, good. Really? No. I've, always, I've had this trouble time and time again with this thing. What have you got there? All right, stuck to the car windscreen. I think I've actually make that out. Oh yes, that's got a little sucker on it. That's really yeah. cool, isn't it? That's just little rubber feated tripod. So I'm gonna pull the windscreen out when I take it. And it's got out. a camera, a normal camera lens on it. Yeah, which isn't damn well focusing. Which isn't focusing. Oh, it's actually starting to mist up now, of course. Oh, excellent. <laughs> 